Hello everybody. We are here today to discuss the details and working of the GNU compiler collection, more popularly known as the GCC. This video is a part of an assignment for our compiler construction project. Before starting with the explanation, I would like to introduce my team. Shreyas, Srihari and Pranik. We are third year computer science students from Bits Pilani Hyderabad campus. Starting with the video, the GCC is a compiler system produced by the GNU project. It supports various programming languages. I'll come back to this in a moment. It is the standard compiler for most projects related to GNU and Linux. GCC has been ported to a wide variety of instruction set architectures. What this means is GCC is used by other programs and software to achieve execution in different computing environments. GCC is widely deployed in the development of several free and proprietary softwares. It can target a wide variety of platforms, including but not limited to several kinds of embedded systems. It is the official compiler of the GNU OS and has also been adopted as the standard compiler for most modern Unix like operating systems including most Linux distributions. GCC also has working versions available for Windows, Android and iOS. For a period of time, uh, the BSD set of operating systems and the macOS also use GCC, but later switch to other compilers for a different set of reasons. The original GCC was developed by Richard Stallman who was the founder of the GNU project. Stallman founded the GNU project in 1984 to create a complete Unix-like OS. He did this to promote freedom and cooperation among computer users and programmers. Later, when looking for a software to bootstrap his operating system, he found that there was a need for a compiler that was good as well as free because the compilers that he was looking for were all paid and he did not want to use a paid software. So it took an existing pastel based Livermore compiler and attempted to rewrite it in C. But he found that the conversion was not very feasible. So with a few of his fellow coders, he created the GNU compiler collection. He used RTL as a base for this. RTL stands for register transfer language. I'll explain this later. So these are a few stats. So it was first released in March 1987 and it has been updated regularly ever since with patches being released almost every month. The GCC is maintained by a varied group of programmers from around the world. It has been ported to a wide variety of ISAs and is widely deployed as a tool in development of free and proprietary softwares. GCC is also available for many embedded systems, including Symbian, ARM based, and Freescale Power based ISA based chips. The GCC supports, the GCC compiler suite supports a lot of languages like C, C, Fortran, Ada, Go, Objective C, Objective C. Earlier versions even supported Java, but since 2017, the Java compiler is no longer maintained and updated. Newer updates have added support for more languages. For instance, the Dlang programming language. With GCC, there are multiple compilers to support different languages. Example, the C++ compiler inside of GCC is called the G++ and so on. Usually when talking about compiling one of these languages, we can use the distinct compiler name or just simply refer to all of them as GCC. Starting with compiler architecture. So these few diagrams depict how a high level language is converted to a machine readable language. So this diagram right here, it shows that it shows how the source code of a high level language is taken. It is pre-processed, then compiled, then assembled, then linked with libraries, and finally 
uh, the output is a executable machine code now we focus more on the compilation aspects so these are the phases of the compiler there's lexical analyzer syntax analyzer semantic analyzer intermediate code generator optimizer and target code generator this also shows how this is a similar diagram which shows how compilers work now compilers can be of various types they can be single pass compilers du dual pass compilers or multi pass compilers single pass compilers include all of the phases in a single module while multi pass compilers break the modules into first pass second pass third pass and so on uh, breaking of module helps compilers work faster and more efficiently so these are the diagrams which depict G gnu gcc now i'll explain these diagrams more thoroughly in the end uh, the point here is the gcc also uses a three pass compilation architecture so architecture overview so each compiler includes three components the front end middle end and back end the every end has a specific job and it takes one kind of file and transforms it into another kind of file for example the source file is converted to ast by the front end which is then further converted into rtl by middle end and the back end finally converts this to assembly representation so the front end includes the preprocessor and the compiler it compiles the source file and generates an assembly file the purpose of the front end basically is to read the source file parse it and convert it into standard abstract syntax tree representation so there is front end for every single programming language because all programming language have distinct structures so there is a different front end architecture for every language which converts the source code into uh, abstract syntax trees now abstract syntax trees because of the inherent differences in language can be different for every language the asts are then further converted to a representation known as generic now generic is same for all languages it does not depend it is not language dependent also G gcc parsers is written using bison grammar which creates the ast representation so what we saw was uh, this was the source code in high level language which was then converted to ast which was then further converted to a generic representation now this generic representation is sent over to the middle end so the middle part of the compiler converts the generic representation into another representation called the gimpl it is a convenient representation for optimizing the source code the gimpl representation is then further modified and converted into an ssa representation which stands for static single assignment so the ssa form is used for optimizations so the gc gcc performs more than 20 different optimizations on ssa trees after these the trees are converted back into gimpl form which is then used to generate an rtl form of a tree rtl as i mentioned before stands for register transfer language so rtl trees is a hardware based representation that corresponds to an abstract target architecture with an infinite number of registers after this the file moves into the back end of the compiler so as we saw the generic form is converted into gimpl which is then converted into ssa form which are then optimized uh, so the gcc does 20 different optimization and finally it is converted to an rtl form which is sent over to the machine code so the machine code re receives the rtl representation and then finally generates the assembly code for the specified target architecture using the rtl representation finally it saves this into a file some 
Examples of backends are x86 and MIPS. So this was how GCC basically works. So coming to why GCC is so popular, why, why is it so widely used? So it is found in a wide variety of systems ranging from GNU to Unix to Windows. It contains support from many different languages. It, it is also highly portable and widely used. And like I said before, it can also be used as a cross compiler. That is to con compile one language into another. It, it is also the default compiler choice for most Unix, Unix type systems. And when manufacturers make new Unix systems, they use GCC by default. They do not bother to make their own compilers. This is done because GCC is very good for general use. GCC can be also installed and distributed with almost every type of Linux systems. And it can also be used to build packages that are distributed as source. Also, uh, GCC can be used, GCC can be modified in such a way that it can be, it is highly tuned with chip systems for high performance programming environments and other embedded environments. Limitations of GCC, there are a few limitations. So for one, it has a very old code base and the design decisions that were taken in the past make it difficult to reuse. All this also makes it difficult to modify the compiler according to specific needs although this has been done in embedded systems and other environments gcc also uses the pcs mechanism and the the disadvantage of this is it cannot serialize the abstract syntax tree out to the disk and read it back if it could have done this it would have been able to analyze entire programs in a better way but uh, GCC does not have this feature and compared to other modern compilers like Clang, GCC is slower and less efficient. It also consumes much more memory. So the target hardware for GCC, so it was initially created for bootstrap GNU OS. It has since been updated multiple times and has been ported to a wide set of instruction set architectures. I explained what porting was and it is widely deployed as a tool in the development of free and proprietary software. GCC, GCC is all, also available in, for many embedded systems including Symbian, ARM based, AMCC and ISA based chips. GCC also has many computing platforms like PowerPC, SPARC, DEC, Alpha, etc. So that kind of brings us to the end of this presentation. So these are a few sources that we have referred to for obtaining information. So that's about it. Thank you for watching.